What's up guys? Welcome sa ating part 2 dito sa Engineering Mechanics, Dynamics of Rigid Bodies, Rectilinear trans Translation, Rectilinear Motion with Constant Acceleration. But before we proceed on our discussion, let's have first a review about sa formula that was discussed in the previous video in part 1. Which means that the motion of a translating body moving in a straight line. So to make the video shorten, I have summarizes. I have to summarize it all. So we have here the terms of the formula. S stands for displacement. Then we have a formula to find it, the displacement. We have S equals to initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. V stands for velocity. To find it, we have two formulas. We have final velocity equals to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Then we have also squared of final velocity equals squared of initial velocity plus 2 times acceleration times displacement. To find the acceleration, we can use or we can derive all the formulas written above. It's either in the formula of displacement or in the formula of velocity. It depends on the situation or the problem given. So again, we have here our problem. 10.05. A stone is dropped down a wheel and 5 seconds later, the sound of the splash is heard. If the velocity of the sound is 1,120 feet per second, what is the depth of the wheel? So in the problem, we have here our given T delta, or we can put it T, T2 equals 5 second, velocity equals 1,120 feet per second. For T1, time for the stone to drop and t delta or minus t1 or you can put it t2 minus t1 it was time for the sound to be heard so according to the problem we can get our equations one for sound d equals to v velocity times time which is equivalent to 1120 times 5 minus t1 for this stone equation, we have d equals 1 half times gravity times t squared. So we can have d equals 1 half times 32.2 times t squared. Then the next step we, we do is to substitute equation 1 to equation, equation 2. So that we can have 1120 feet per second times 5 minus t1 equals 16.1 t squared. So in this case, we will find first the value of, of time. So we will use the quadratic equation to get the value of t. So we have t equals to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a so now we can get t equals to 4.6845 seconds then substitute the value that we have for the time which is 4.6845 therefore we can get d equals to 1 half times 32.2 times the value of time which is 4.6845 squared then we can have our the depth of the wheel is equal to 353 feet. And that's our final answer. So another sample in a problem 10007. A stone is dropped from a captive balloon at an elevation of 1,000 feet. Two seconds later, another stone is projected vertically upward from the ground with a velocity of 248 feet per second. If g or if gravity is 32 feet per second squared, when and where will the stones 
past each other. So in the problem, we have our given, which is initial velocity for this stone 2 equals 248 feet per second. Our height is 1,000 feet. The gravity, instead of 32.2, since that the gravity is given, or the value of gravity is given in the problem, which is 32 feet per second squared, so we will use it as the fixed value of the gravity. Then we have time equals, or we have t equals time for the first stone, then t minus 2 is time for the second stone. So in analyzing the problem, we must have first draw our free body diagram. So the blue ball here is our first stone which is dropped 1000 feet high and the second stone from the ground is thrown upward vertically and the the, the orange ball is our second stone. When and where did they pass each other? So based on the free body diagram, we can get our equations. We have equation 1, 1,000 minus height equals 1 half times 32 times t squared. So we can get height equals 1,000 minus 16.1 t squared. For the equation 2, for the second ball, we have height equals to 248 times t minus 2 minus 1 half times 32 times t minus 2 squared. So now we can get height equals to 248 t minus 496 minus 16.1 t squared plus 64 t minus 64. Then substitute equation 1, 2, 2. So we have 1000 minus 16.1 t squared equals 248 minus 496 minus 16.1 t squared plus 64t minus 64. But you can also write it by adding negative 64 and negative 496. So we can have now 1,560 equals to 312t. Then divide both sides by 312 to get our value of time which is equal to 5 seconds. After, the, after getting the value of the time, we will now substitute it in the equation which is h is equal to 1,000 minus 16.1 times the square of or times 5 squared so we can have our height equals to 600 feet and that is our final answer so another problem in 1008 a stone is thrown vertically upward from the ground with a velocity of 48.3 feet per second one second later, another stone is thrown vertically upward with a velocity of 96.6 feet per second. How far above from the ground will, will stone be at the same level? So based on the problem, we can get our given, or we can determine now our given initial velocity for the first stone. We have 48.3 feet per second. Our initial velocity for the second stone, we have 96.6 feet per second. T is stands for the time for the first stone. T minus 1 is the time for the second stone. So equations we have for the first stone, H is equal to 48.3 T minus 1 half times 32.2 T squared. Therefore, we have h or height equals to 48.3t minus 16.1t squared. 
The same process for the second stone, we have H is equal to 96.6 T minus 1 minus 1 half times 32.2 times T minus 1 squared. So we can have now 128.8t minus 16.1t squared minus 112.7. Next is to substitute equation 1 to equation 2. Therefore, we have 48.3t minus 16.1t squared equals to 128.tt minus 16.1t squared minus 112.7. So we have 112.7 equals 80.5t. Uh, divide both sides both side by 80.5 so we can get time 1.4 seconds. Substitute the value of t to get the height which is equal to 36.064 feet and that is our final answer so another vid an another problem here a ball is shot vertically into the air at a velocity of 193.2 feet per second after four seconds another ball is shot vertically into the air what initial velocity must the second ball have in order to meet the first ball 386.4 feet from the ground? So our given based on the problem, initial velocity for the first stone, uh, for the first ball, we have 193.2 feet per second. Our height is equal to 386.4 feet. T is the time for the first stone, for the first ball rather, and T minus 4 is equal to time for the second ball. So our solutions, we have our problem S, a formula S equals to initial velocity times time minus 1 half times gravity times square t squared. So we have our height 386.4 equals initial velocity 193.2 times t minus 16.1 t squared. By using a quadratic equation, we can get t equals to 9.464 seconds and 2.536 seconds. So in this case, we will use the 9.464 seconds. For the second ball, we have S equals to initial velocity times time minus 1 half times gravity times T squared. The same procedure to get the initial velocity of 158.69 feet Per second. Now it's your turn to answer this problem. Repeat problem 1005 if the sound of the splash is heard after 4 seconds. You can comment your answer. The first one to, to solve with the correct answer will be rewarded. Yung sa scanned notes na hinihingi Ninyo. Kasi ang dami nagme-message sa akin humihingi ng scan solutions ko about this uh, reference book pero hindi ko ma-entertain yung iba na bigyan na yung iba hindi pa. So this time, the first one to answer this question with the correct answer will be rewarded the scan no solutions of this book. Thank you. That's all once again. It's me, John Liza. Thank you for watching. If you are new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, like, and hit the notification bell 
para updated ka sa susunod nating solution videos. Thank you and God bless.